بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ It is truly a blessing and an honor once again to join in this global summit, God summit, and to address a topic which truly is global as well, the idea of God Almighty being merciful. This is a concept that is in universal teachings of religion, and it's also embedded in the fundamental teachings of Islam in the Holy Quran. And yet, there's a story that strikes you when you hear about it, of a person who must have known that God is forgiving and merciful, and yet still he does something that's so shocking that put yourself in position of his children when they come home one day and he's nearing death. And what does he tell his children? That when I die, I want you to take my body and burn it to ashes. This is your father telling you this. And take those ashes and pulverize them and scatter all those ashes into the sea. Now, some faith traditions have this idea of, of burning the body after death, but his was not the tradition. He said this to his sons because he said, I have sinned so greatly against God that if he were to grab me, he will punish me worse than he has punished anyone ever before. So he, is, he was truly trying to escape the punishment by just destroy my body and God won't get me. But God is not controlled by matter or the particles of dust or the ashes in a sea. And so when he commands the earth to bring forth what you have, lo and behold, the man is standing in front of God. And God is now asking this man, why did you do that? What, what possessed you? What came over you to think that you should do this, what you did? The man responds to God and says, God, I did it because of fear of you or I was afraid of you. The fear of God caused that man to burn his body to ashes and scatter them to the four winds, into the seas to be lost. God hears this man and says, because of that fear, I forgive you. This is the sign of how God is loving and compassionate and merciful to those who have something in their heart that may not be, in their sense, a person who's, who is sinless, who's perfect, but he has or she has in the heart that consciousness that God exists and that fear that I'm breaking his commands and I'm doing something against his will, so therefore I, 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 I fear to face him. And this is the idea that we see throughout, again, traditions of, of religion, and it's truly a teaching of Islam. This man failed to understand the depth of the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. Allah says in the Holy Quran, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَّقِينَ God loves the mutaki. And this word taqwa, or piety, God loves those who are God-fearing, who are conscious of God, who understand that life is not just what is the physical world, it's a spiritual world, and God does exist, and we are accountable to this God. And this is the idea of, of, of being a mutaki who walks through life with that consciousness. And the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, وسلم, said that a person who is a Muslim is one, one who is truly at the level of true understanding of, of goodness. He walks through life as if, what? He can see God. Or at least he understands that God is seeing him or her. And that is the true sense of consciousness. So did this man have some consciousness that God watched, watched him and understood that what he was doing was wrong? Yes. So in a sense, this man had a level of isan, of consciousness and goodness in his heart and soul that led him along this path. But the greatest thing is that God is saying that of all the attributes that you can define me by, what is the one word that you would use to define God Almighty? Of all the words in the English vocabulary, what is the one word we would use if we had to select one, that this is what God is? One word. You pick that word in your own mind right now and tell me what, what you think it would be in your mind, but I'll tell you what God is saying himself. God said, if you want to pick one word for me, that word is rahmah, mercy. Every other attribute of mine flows from this great ocean of mercy. And those are just rivers or tributaries flowing out of this attribute of mercy. And this is my being. And so when you look at the Holy Quran, 
Every single chapter begins with what? Bismillah, in the name of God, Ar-Rahman, the most gracious, that's grace, the mercy of grace, Warahim, and the Lord of mercy. Meaning that now that is a Lord that not just set the whole stage up for all of us, and I mean every single living thing is, is enjoying the blessing of grace because none of us came to the world and asked God, oh, set up oxygen for me and food and water and give me family and all. It was all placed here before we came to the earth. And we're enjoying that grace. Now what we do with those gifts means that God will respond and he'll show mercy to us by showing for us showing his, his favors. This is an interesting concept where now we understand that our relation with God Almighty is not just a servant to a master, but one based on love, who is a recipient constantly in life of his grace and mercy. Thus God says again, that all oh, my servants, the beautiful verse of the Holy Quran, all oh, my servants, who have sinned against me, Ya ibadi, aladina asrafu ala anfosihim. Stop for a moment and think about this verse. He's saying, Ya ibadi, O oh my servant, who has committed a sin or is committing sins constantly, would you call someone who's breaking your, your rules and your commands and, and your directions, your beloved friend and servant and, and, and one who's following your ways? That's the strange thing about the Word of God. Although the person he's addressing here is committing wrong against himself, like this person I started talking about, God still calls him my servant, still treats that person with that love and affection, that bond, that you did not break the bond that I am your creator and you are my creation. I am your master and you are my servant. I am the one who is, you, you love and you are still my beloved. You're my servant. Therefore, if you're my servant and you have committed these wrongs, never despair of God's mercy. Why? Because God can forgive and does forgive and will forgive all sins and all wrongs. This is the amazing beauty of Islamic teachings about mercy. That no one should ever lose hope. No one should ever feel they have done something so horrendous, so egregious, so much against any command of God that there's no way for them to be forgiven of that. But God is telling us all that you are my servants, and in fact, I made you all weak. Not a single one of us sitting here today or listening to this program can in our minds and hearts say that we are sinless people who have never broken the command of those 700 listed in the Quran. In fact, we are constantly probably breaking commands, we don't even realize it. And God is constantly forgiving us of all that error and transgression and wrong that we're doing. And thus he's saying to us, no matter it's a small error or a great error, don't despair. In the Holy Quran, the narration begins about Adam and Eve and the story of Satan. And Satan begins to convince Adam to try to adopt a certain course of action. And Adam eventually is listening to this and, and he's forgetting that God commands to avoid this kind of action. And so he commits a fault. And Satan thus is embodiment in this, in this whole uh, narration in the form of someone called Iblis. In Arabic, the word Iblis comes from root uh, balasa, which means to despair, to lose hope. And he despaired because this was the being who refused to submit to God Almighty when God said, submit to Adam. He is now your, your leader and follow him. And if you do so, you'll, you'll be in peace, you'll be in Jannah. Meaning that you'll be in a place where everything will be balanced. And this being who was overcome by the spirit of, 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 of despair, he gave up, he refused to obey God, he didn't uh, accept the authority of Adam. And he became so despairing that then from that day forward, uh, he promised God that he would always try to misguide human, human beings and instill in them this despair. What this man faced, 
who was ready to destroy his body and burn it and throw it through the winds, was that spirit of despair. And what you find in the world right now is many people, this is what they, they sometimes confront. They have to confront their own humanity. That yes, we're weak and God is perfect, but once you confront that humanity, that, that imperfection, that weakness, sometimes it can overwhelm us so much that we may start going toward that dark and that uh, despairing outlook and fearing that there's no way back. And once you go along that slippery slope and down that path, there is great danger that we may, in fact, continue to sin and wind up becoming a hardcore sinner. God Almighty therefore says in the Holy Quran many uh, passages to uh, encourage us not to lose hope. One of them I've, I've quoted already. Again, God says that God loves in the Allah yuhibbul tawabin, those who turn to him. And so when we are turning away from God, all he wants us to do is turn back to him. Again, God is merciful to those who do good and says it's the goodness that we do that can wipe out any of the evil of our conduct. So he's opened up all kind of, of, of pathways and doorways for us to receive his mercy. This mercy, interestingly, is not just limited to God. It's in everything, as I say. We are the embodiment of that mercy that came, that grace that came in our birth. And the whole creation is affected by the mercy. Because God says in one tradition to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that God has 100 mercies. And he's kept 99 mercies for himself and sent down one mercy into this world by which everything, all the men, great and low, all of the animals, all of the insects, everything that's living, will show compassion toward one another, and the wild beast will even take care of its own young. The lions and the beasts will not devour their young, they'll take care of them. And we see that this beautiful tradition ends by saying, God, that the 99 mercies, what happened to them? He says, these are the things I keep for myself. God is mercy. And he says, I kept 99 portions of that mercy for myself to give out to my servants, on the day of judgment, by which I forgive their sins. Again, very encouraging to think about the world we live in. And all of us understand mercy. And we, we experience in our lives, in our relationships, we see it all around us, that people showing compassion, sympathy, and, and, and mercy toward one another, and even the animals. That idea is one that will lift any soul up who's feeling that there's no hope for me. I have done something against God or God's commands or against the authority of his, his prophet or his successor. That is unforgivable. Whereas God is saying that kind of mercy, the mercy of a mother. And good he said mother because mother's mercy, all of us again understand, is full of such tender care and such compassion. She will overlook all the faults and flaws of her, her infant child. The child will stand up and start talking and doing things and, and, and not obeying her, but she will keep overlooking that and helping this child to stay on the course of, of, of growing to be an independent person. And therefore, as long as that's the case, we see in the hadith, hadith called Qudsi hadith, where God is telling about himself and giving the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallam a message to share with the whole world. So let me share just a couple of those traditions where God talks to the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and says, this is who I am, and tell the world this. He says, O son of Adam, O son of Adam, I shall go on forgiving you so long as you pray to me and put your hope in my forgiveness, whatever may be your sins. O son of Adam, I do not care if your sins should pile up to the sky and you should beg pardon of me, I would forgive you. O son of Adam, if you come to me with an earth full of sins and meet me, not associating anything with me in worship, I will certainly grant you as much, much pardon as will fill the earth. Again, another Qudsi Hadith, he says, O my servants, again addressing all of us, you sin by night and day, and I forgive all sins, 
So seek forgiveness of me and I shall forgive you. And lastly, Satan is now again telling God Almighty and having a conversation that by your glory and majesty, as long as the children of Adam exist on earth, I shall continuously misguide them. What does God say? By my glory and majesty, as long as they seek my forgiveness, I will continue to forgive them. So in these traditions, all of us see that we have opened to us so many doors of, of, of opportunity for forgiveness that none of us should ever despair of that mercy. And this is a universal struggle sometimes, especially as people in faith sometimes drift away from faith and they may get caught up in some behaviors and actions which they know are against what are their teachings and traditions and commandments of God. And they continue to drift further and further away, not knowing the way back. But if they reflect on God's word in the Holy Quran, the traditions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and God's words himself, they will know that there's always a door and a pathway back where they can seek God's mercy and grace. The Holy Prophet Muhammad on one occasion said, for all of us, and again I say this is not something just for that hardened sinner who's committed some major crime, some cardinal sin. For anyone who's committed any action that we may not even realize that we've broken something, he says, on the day of judgment, we will be brought to God Almighty, and he will wrap his wing of mercy around us, and he'll say, and make us confess, do you remember doing so-and-so sin? Do you remember the action you did, something you said or you did that was sinful? And that person will say, yes. My Lord, I remember. Then he will say, I covered it up for you in this world, and I forgive it for you today as well. Now, why I found this whole concept that we're talking about today of the mercy of God so important for us in this day and age, it reminds all of us that we should be servants of this Lord of grace and mercy. As we're engaging with people in our daily lives, as we're thinking not just about ourselves, but people around us, especially young people nowadays. In this country, one of the biggest struggles of young people is they find that there's loneliness in their life. They have no one to talk to. And as a result of that loneliness and that being in that, that secluded place, they go into depression and they get these suicidal thoughts sometimes. They, they lose all hope for life. Much less hope for that there's a God. They don't even want to live the life anymore. And I remember when I first was, uh, came back to America to serve, I served in a place in San Francisco. In San Francisco, there's a place where people like to go. It's called the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, trust me, it's not made of gold. Some people think that. They try to go there and, you know, this, this is the tradition of it. It's actually reddish color. But it's a beautiful place. And it's a lovely scene, the highways and the byways. It's the ocean on one side. And you cross this bridge and you get from one side to the other, to, to the peninsula. And people walk across all the time. But I read this story that really, again, moved me because it was about, a, about those people who crossed that bridge at the point where they have lost all hope in life and they want to end their lives. And they, since, they say since this bridge was built in 1937, over 1,500 people have crossed that bridge and tried to jump off and end their life. Of those 1,500 plus people, only 25 survived. And I read the story of one person who survived it. And you know what he said? He said, I started off that day. I got on a bus, and the bus was full of people. When I reached the bridge, people again walking all around. It's a popular place. And I was hoping that one person, and I'm going to read you his words, that one person would recognize that I was in trouble because tears was flowing down his eyes, from, from down, down his face. One person would say something to me and I would stop and tell him my whole story and I would be saved from that step I took of jumping off that bridge. Did anyone notice this man crying? Did anyone on that bus, on that bridge, turn to him, and put their camera aside, leave the person there would and say, sir, are you okay? This is a 19-year-old person walking across a bridge going toward his last step of life. And no one said a word. He says that when I finally got to that, that ledge and I stepped off, 
quote, the moment I hit free fall was an instant regret. The moment he took that step, he knew I threw it all away now. Why did I do that? But it's too late. He's now in free fall, falling 75 miles per hour from that bridge down to that water below. He said, I said to myself, what have I done? I don't want to die. God, please save me. I recognized that I made the greatest mistake in my life. And I thought it was too late. The next thing he knew, someone was pulling him out of that water saying, son, what did you just do? He said, I tried to end my life. He said, why? I didn't want to live anymore. But then he realized that he was one of the lucky survivors who took that plunge and was pulled from that water and later on became one of the most motivational, powerful speakers to tell about his experiences, to save people from that despair and wanting to give up their life. Understand that there are so many people around us right now, not only despairing of life, despairing of God's mercy. They have done something or they've been doing things in the course of their lives. And again, imagine we being servants of a gracious God, knowing the Lord who is so merciful and gracious and forgiving, that he'll forgive sins. That one word we say to that person we see in that dark, lonely corner, brooding and thinking about his life, to give them that hopeful message that never despair. God forgives all sins and he can forgive whatever you have done. And so turn to him, as he says, and seek repentance and try your best and never give up hope. This is the message all of us need to carry from this, this summit we're talking about, God Almighty. Not just to love him, but to share him with those especially who have lost all hope in him or hope in life and need to be brought back from that edge of that dark place, that edge where they want to destroy their body and cast their ashes to, wind, to the winds and not have any accountability because they fear God. That fear will save them. That thought will be the thought that will help them. And so let us be those who carry that message to all and bless our lives in so doing and lives of countless others who we may touch in the process. May God help us to do so. Amen.